Hi everybody, welcome back. I want to talk today about my beauty essentials. So these are either products or tools that I deem as essential for my beauty routine. Things that I kind of can't be without. So I've got nine items to talk about. I've got some body care slash sort of like hand and nail care, skincare, hair care and makeup. So let's start off with skincare items. Now this product is a skincare saviour for me. This is the La Roche-Posay Seeker Plus Balm B5 and believe the hype, this product is amazing. I bought this when my skin last year at some point had an allergic reaction to, can't remember what the item was now, but I had an allergic reaction to another skincare product and I bought this because I quickly went online when it happened and I was like, right, what do I need to add into my routine to help my skin calm down? And it was a really, really simple cleanser and a simple hydrating protective moisturiser. And this one kept coming up time and time again. So I bought it and I have not looked back since. It is an amazing product. It just helped to calm my skin down. It helped to clear up the dryness and soothe my skin as well. But I use this even when my skin hasn't had a reaction and I've had probably two or three allergic skincare reactions in the past couple of years. This at the moment is my evening moisturizer. It is so super hydrating. So even before I was using this as my evening moisturizer, if I did, if I put on my moisturizer of a morning or an evening and I noticed I had some tightness around here, I'd put on a little bit of this and the tightness would be gone immediately. It was instantaneous. My skin just felt so much more hydrated that I actually then decided to use this as a moisturizer in its own right, rather than as a topper over the top of whatever moisturizer I was using. It's a really good price point as well. Now I can't remember exactly how much I spent on it, but it really is an affordable option. And you get a really big 100 ml tube as well. And I think this is the updated formula. So I had the, the previous formula, heard they were updating it, got a little bit scared, bought it anyway, and my skin still tolerates it fine. It's just a hero product. I will never be without this item now. Once this starts to get used up, straight away, I'm going to go and get a replacement because I just think it's absolutely brilliant. It's a fantastic barrier moisturiser for my evening skincare routine as part of my skin cycling. So I do one night exfoliating, one night retinol and two nights of a barrier repair and I use this as my evening moisturiser seven days a week. So it fits into whatever routine I'm following that day. Also works really well as a morning moisturiser as well, so although I use it as an evening moisturiser, you can use it as your morning one. It's not too heavy or too thick or too greasy, it doesn't leave your skin feeling really tacky afterwards, it just sinks in really beautifully. Provides your skin with a little bit of a sheen afterwards so your skin does look healthy. Just an absolute pleasure to use, I would highly recommend this to, to anybody and would continue to repurchase this as long as they make it. So next essential skincare item is an SPF and this is mine. You can see how thin it is at the moment. I need to actually cut into it and scoop out the rest. Although looking through the tube at the moment, it doesn't really look like there's much in it at all, but I can get a couple more days out of this. The one I'm currently using is the Ultraviolet SPF 50 Supreme Screen Hydrating Facial Sunscreen. I really like this. Initially, I was put off with the scent. The scent was a bit overwhelming, a bit too kind of sickly sweet and just very off-putting. However, I don't even notice the scent with this now, I've, I've gotten used to it. I use three pumps of this and it sinks in beautifully. It's just like using a moisturiser. Some SPFs can be very heavy, very greasy, just a bit of a faff to rub into your face of a morning. So this is a really quick and easy sunscreen to use. It doesn't irritate my eyes when I use it over my eyelids. But actually it's not really this specific SPF I want to talk about as an essential, it's SPF as an essential overall. Now unfortunately the hype around SPF and the importance of using it every single day kind of happened a little bit too late for me. Ideally I wish it kind of happened when I was in my teenage years, my early teenage years because then I would have used it from a really young age. But I would probably say it's only been in the past five years where I've started to to apply SPF a lot more frequently. Now I did struggle a little bit with applying it every single day because I thought, do I need to? You know, I'm, I'm not going outside, but even if you're not going outside, if you can read a book without the lights on, apparently I think that's what Caroline Hiram says, you need an SPF. 
So I was applying SPF probably like every other day and it did take me a little while to get into that routine of wearing it every single day but now I'm in that routine I don't even question it it is just part of my morning skincare routine after I've put my moisturizer on five ten minutes later I will put some of this on regardless of what I'm doing whether I'm going out whether I'm staying in whether I've got all the the curtains and blinds open or closed I just do this now I wear this every single day without fail and I like to think most of us now know the importance of protecting your skin from the sun but even though in the UK at the moment we are in the winter months well coming towards the winter months actually we, we are in autumn still wear your SPF every single day wear it without fail get yourself into that routine and protect your skin from the sun okay next let's do hand care because I could really do with the putting on one of the products I want to talk about the first one I'm going to talk about is a cuticle oil. This is the CND Solar Oil that I'm using at the moment. I was using the OPR cuticle oil, used it up as part of my project pan, and I've bought this. And I'm trying to get myself into the, the frame of mind, like I am with an SPF, of wearing a cuticle oil every single day. I'm getting there, I'm on like probably every other day at the moment. But putting on a cuticle every single day is just so important for the strength and condition of your nails. Especially if you're somebody like me who, if you're feeling a bit anxious, you, you can like pick your skin, you can pick your nails, you can kind of bite them. It's not a good habit, I know, but it comes from feeling, you know, a little bit anxious, a little bit stressed in my case. And putting on a cuticle oil every day takes no time. It takes like a minute or two to just kind of sit there I sometimes do it in a meeting if I'm in one of those those really big meetings where I can just sit there and listen. I'll just put some of that in, I'll put some hand cream on over the top, I'll put it on whilst I'm watching the TV, I'll put it on before I go to bed. So it is a routine that doesn't take much time at all and you can do it multiple times during the day as well and I notice the results so super quickly. After a day or two my my skin around my cuticles is so much more hydrated, my nails feel stronger, they grow better as well and my my nails at the moment are looking pretty darn good, they feel strong as well and it comes from using a cuticle oil. And now that my nails and my skin are looking healthy, I've got long nails as well, that also deters me from having those like biting or picking sessions when I am feeling anxious or stressed so this is something that I will definitely not be without now but I just need to get myself more into that routine of using it every single day I'm at every other day at the moment so that's pretty good but every single day for a cuticle oil like I say is a really quick and easy thing to do and the results are instantaneous okay the item that I want to use it's a hand cream now, like with a cuticle oil, applying a hand cream on a regular basis just makes such a difference to the condition of your skin, especially at the moment here in the UK. Like I say, we're in the autumn, coming into the winter now, and I have really noticed the difference in how my skin is feeling. My skin is feeling a lot more dry now, a lot more tight. It feels thirsty. I had a bath last night and I got out of the bath and immediately my legs were like, they needed some moisture and my hands are the same as well especially because you know you're washing your hands quite frequently after you go to the toilet when you are cooking our hands are always being washed and I've just noticed that they're getting a lot more dry so I'm carrying this item around the flat with me when I had multiple hand creams I used to have a hand cream pretty much in most places in the flat I'd have one by my desk one on the coffee table, one by my bed. There would be one in my handbag, one in my work bag. So I had a hand cream regardless of what situation I was in. And this is also an item that I dip into multiple times during the day as well. And this is part of like my bedtime routine. So I get into bed, put on some lip balm. If I remember, I put on some cuticle oil and then seal it in with a hand cream. And it just helps my hands feel really soft and conditioned and nourished in the morning. And the particular hand cream I really like to use are the Garnier ones. They're really cheap and you get a decent size. You get a big 100ml tube of hand cream. They are not sticky. They're not going to make your hands feel like really sticky and tacky afterwards. Like you can't use your phone that you're going to get smears on it. Sinks in beautifully but you do get a good amount of time to kind of massage it in as well. And I like to massage it along the fingers, along the cuticles, in between the fingers. I take my thumb and go into my palm like that as well and I don't feel the need to spend a lot more money on a hand cream these ones do the job so another beauty essential for me 
So next I want to talk about hair care items. I've got three. First one is a hairbrush and you might be thinking it's just a standard hairbrush. This is the Wet Brush Pro. So this is where the particular brand, the particular item of hairbrush here is important. It's not just any old hairbrush. Now I came across the brand Wet Brush, I'm guessing about 10 years ago. My mum stumbled across a shopping channel where they were promoting the hairbrush, the wet brush, and she said that it was probably a good thing for me to try. So my hair is very fine, very thin, gets knotted really easily, and also it's a bugger to brush or to comb when it's been wet. And I always used to struggle with that. And at the time I was using a comb because I think back then that was what you, what you used when you had wet hair, you used a comb to brush it through. And I watched some of it, some of the, the presentation, and I thought, oh god, yeah, they're just, they're just exaggerating how good this product is. I'm going to get it home and be, like, stuck with a hairbrush in my hair. However, it is a brilliant product. Now, yes, how you brush your hair is important, so you start at your ends and you move up. You don't brush your hair from the top and try and, like, pull the knots all the way through the hair because you're just going to end up breaking your hair off. But this made brushing my hair after I'd gotten out of the shower or if it was really knotty, really, really easy. I had a lot less breakage. My hair just felt a lot better as well. And Wet Brush is the brand that I go for now. I have tried Tangle Teaser. It's good, not as good as Wet Brush though. And I got the Wet Brush Pro because it was a recommendation from Chris Wenzel's YouTube channel and I follow all of his recommendations. But it's just an absolutely brilliant brand for brushing your hair really carefully, really kindly. And again, I won't look back. I will continue to buy wet brushes for as long as the brand exists. All right, another hair care item and one that I've kind of only recently started using. And it's a leave-in conditioner. And this beauty essential is both for this specific item and the category. So I was using a leave-in conditioner at the start of this year I think it was the Aveda Damage Remedy Daily Hair Repair something along those lines I didn't really get on with it I didn't really see that it did much however I again I stumbled across Chris Wenzel's videos and he said how a leave-in conditioner is really important for your hair so I tried the one that he recommended which is the Purology 21 Colour Fanatic and this is brilliant it's an absolutely brilliant product once I've washed my hair get out of the shower once it's been towel dried it's gotten rid of the excess water i will take about six sprays of this on to the lengths and the ends of my hair making sure that one spray gets all of the ends brush it through and then my hair once it's dried just feels so hydrated it feels silky smooth it's very soft it's got a nice shine to it and I feel like the improvement in my hair at the moment really does sort of stem from this. I've really noticed the difference with using this product. And again, this is a product that I will continue to buy. So if you're not using a leave-in conditioner currently, do go out and get yourself one because it is such an important product for looking after your lengths and your ends. Don't just rely on a conditioner. Once you've washed and conditioned your hair, your hair will start to use moisture and a leave-in conditioner helps with that. But this item is just is just fantastic and I've probably got about a quarter of this left so I probably need to stock off on this sometime soon because I don't want to run out. And then the third hair care item is a hair oil. The one I'm using is, I can never pronounce it, Jizu, Gizu, Gizau, Gizau, I don't know. I need to actually listen to somebody pronouncing this correctly because I have probably butchered the pronunciation of it. Now, it's not necessarily the, the exact brand of hair oil that I'm talking about here. It's nice. I don't particularly like the bottle, though. I find that the bottle itself gets really, really oily, despite how careful I am with it. But a hair oil is really important for taking care of the very ends of your hair. So where your shampoo is important for your roots, your conditioner is important for your lengths and ends, your leave-in conditioner is for your lengths and ends, your oil is important for your very ends of your hair. So this is what is going to help keep the very ends hydrated, going to keep them smooth, hopefully prevent or reduce the amount of split ends you're going to notice, and just makes your hair look really soft and silky and hydrated. So although I think the condition of my hair at the moment really stems mostly from the leave-in conditioner, the hair oil definitely helps. If I notice that my ends are looking a little bit fluffy, I'll apply 
about half a pea sized amount of this through the ends and it just makes them look so much more silky and hydrated. And hopefully I can grow my hair that bit quicker as well because I, I always struggle with growing my hair. I probably get to about here and then my hair stops growing. It doesn't stop because it's always growing from your roots but it's probably just splitting off at the ends. So using a hair roll is gonna help with that as well. So again, another essential one that I apply not every day, so I don't need it every day. Definitely on wash days and then here and there where I notice the ends are fluffy. So get yourself a hair oil as well if you haven't already got one. And then last two items are makeup related. So first one is a beauty sponge. And I, nine times out of ten, will use a sponge, a damp sponge, to apply my foundation and apply my concealer. I find it a lot easier to work with compared to a brush. I feel like when I use a brush sometimes I can notice a lot more texture, it doesn't look as blended, especially with concealer under the eyes. But with a damp beauty sponge I just notice that the, the final look is a bit more seamless, a lot more blended and is just a lot easier and quicker to work with. Now the brand I tend to go for is Real Techniques because they're, they're great value. And I like as well that you have that flat bit, so that is really good for going underneath your eyes as well. You can get mini ones of these. I do have some mini ones, but I tend to kind of stick to the big orange one. You do, however, go through these a lot quicker than you do with brushes as well, because once you start to get like a split or a tear in it, bacteria can get into it, so you should probably throw it away. But it just makes applying my makeup so much more easier, and I just prefer how it looks as well when I use a sponge, so another essential for me. And then the last essential is another item like the hand cream where I kind of carry it with me wherever I go, is a lip balm. This one is brilliant. This is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It's a big 20 gram tub. And I've had this for probably a good two years and I'm only now kind of getting close to using this product up. So although it's expensive, it will last you a really long amount of time because you don't need much as well. And lip balms are an essential for me. They have always been an essential. I hate that that feeling where you can feel that your lips are getting a little bit dry. Once I've noticed that, I immediately need to put something on my lips. Now, I did hear that there's a term for that as well. It's kind of like you're, you're addicted, I suppose, to keep putting something on your lips. But I just hate the feeling of my lips being dry. And um, once I notice it, it's all I think about. So in the past, I've been caught out a few times I've been out and about my lips have been dry and I had and I've had no lip products on me to apply so I had to go and buy a product so now I would always have something on me in terms of lip products and nine times out of ten it will be a lip balm just because it's really quick and easy to use and I don't have to worry about color as well like I might do with say a lipstick and this is another item that I can kind of keep applying it throughout the day I can keep my lips moisturized and I think I did mention as well that when I go to bed, as soon as I get into bed, I put on some lip balm, cuticle oil, if I remember, and hand cream. And that is my kind of every single day evening routine. So those are my beauty essentials. So please let me know in the comments down below which items are your essentials as well. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching guys. And I will see you again soon for my next video. Have a lovely day. Bye.